Bill Maher is once again on the warpath against all things woke, this time in Democrat-controlled schools. We're going to take a look at the fascinating panel discussion. We're going to see how the panel actually ends up missing the ultimate answer here. And stick with me to the very end of this video when I'll reveal what it all means for the future of wokeness and the Democrat Party. You're not going to want to miss this. So, um, you know, we live in a prison yard in this country where it's just everything is tribal. And like anything to do with schools or education is something really the Democrats have to answer for because they control it. I mean, if you look at the Democratic Convention, it's like three quarters of them are teachers. My sister's a teacher. I'm a big defender of teachers. But what's going on in the schools is outrageous. And somebody needs to answer for it. I was seeing a couple of weeks ago while we were off a six-year-old in Virginia. A six-year-old brought a gun to school in Newport News. My day, it was an apple. <laughs> Shot the teacher, which is horrible in itself. But here's the, thought I, the quote I thought was very interesting. This is from the school librarian. It's talking about how students are routinely assaulted. She said, every day in school, in one of her schools, teachers, students, and other staff members are being hurt. Every day, they're hit, they're beaten, they're bitten, they're beaten. How did we completely lose control? How could any kid learn in this atmosphere when you can't, you can't even survive? And these are all schools. It's not just inner city schools. These, I hear this anecdotally from people. We've completely lost control of our schools. So right there, Mar doesn't pull any punches. He goes right to the heart of the foundation of any sustainable society. You can't learn, you can't teach, you can't work, you, you frankly can't do anything if your physical safety is constantly vulnerable to violent attack. Physical safety is the necessary precondition for a flourishing society. And Mars is recognizing that at least when it comes to our schools, that civilizational prerequisite is imploding. Now, politically speaking, who's to blame for this? Again, Marr doesn't pull any punches to his credit. It's the Democrats. It's his own party. As he noted, the teachers' unions are overwhelmingly Democrat. Just follow the money and the endorsements every election cycle. The Democrats own the schools, schools that are by the most basic social indicator imploding. But why? Sorry, What's the root the, cause the of why kids are allowed to run over, ramshot over a school like this? Isn't it parents? If the parents disciplined the kids, would they be able to do this in the school? Well, I mean, I... I, it I turns out and no one wants to go I after the parents because yeah. those are your voters. But that's yeah. where you have to look. If you really want to be real about it, that's where the problem I is. Think parents should Again, Mars, absolutely right here. And we have a number of studies to confirm this. The single greatest contributor to social degeneracy is the breakdown of the family. A kid, black or white, raised without a dad, raised in a single parent home, is five times more likely to be poor and commit crimes, nine times more likely to drop out of school, and 20 times more likely to end up in jail. And what have we seen over the last decades? In 1965, 25% of blacks were born outside of wedlock, born in a single parent home. Today, it's 75%. In the 1960s, 5% of whites were born outside of wedlock. Today, it's 30%. The social significance of this is rather obvious once we realize that it's the family more than any other institution where children learn that they are morally obligated to people, places, institutions, and traditions they did not personally choose for themselves, but instead chose them. And that cultivates a sense of fidelity and responsibility that's absolutely indispensable to a flourishing society. You kill the family and you can kiss society goodbye. And what Bill Maher doesn't seem to recognize is that no one has done more to undermine the institution of the family than modern secular liberalism. Hey gang, I've got some big news I'm sharing with my audience at the end of the month, but I can only share it with those of you who are on my email list. If you're sick and tired of this woke news out there and ready to get a daily dose of conservative optimism that goes way beyond my daily updates, 
you will not want to miss this news. It's absolutely amazing. So before you do anything, click on that link below and sign up onto my email list to learn more about this awesome update. Plus, as an email subscriber, we'll never, ever lose touch with each other. As conservatives, you know, getting silenced by big tech like never before, being a part of my email newsletter guarantees we'll always stay connected. So don't wait. Click on that link, sign up on my email list, and I can't wait to share with you the big news at the end of the month. Why, why do you have to teach it? Why does a four-year-old come in? Instead of teaching them the colors, you're telling them, pick your pronoun. Well, yeah. Where on earth did that come from? Uh, and right. who, who told us it was going to be imposed on children? And now it's yes. in school curriculum everywhere. I told my kids when this wokeness started happening, this gender thing started happening, it's pretty new. I said, don't be coming home with your gender pronouns you better be coming home with a's and b's i mean that's what it really should be about our education system well and it's not but more and more you look at these curriculum it's all about that stuff mm -hmm. well, it's that, all about thing. identity it's all about being queer or trans i mean children can't understand that stuff not in kindergarten and you say that as a queer <laughs> I, <laughs> right? I honestly I don't want to teach five-year-olds about no. being gay. I think it's, wait a well, little bit. And, and they'll pick it up anyway. It's not like they can't watch the TV. I mean, <laughs> you don't, but what they're doing is not telling them that. They're telling them something worse. They're telling them that people can choose to be a boy or a girl or neither or both or something else entirely. Right. That is a lie. You can't. And it's done in order to placate certain special interests in Washington, namely the LGBTQIA plus people who also have been captured by the far left. We should say I, no I, to this. I, I, that's, I know. Why is it? I, don't, I just don't understand why this is the hill the Democratic Party wants to die on. These are obviously very, very important questions that both Sullivan and Marr don't seem to have the answers for. When did kindergarten classrooms suddenly become so obsessed, as it were, with teaching gender identity? And why are Democrats so determined to die on this hill? What Marr and his guests don't seem to realize is precisely how radical transgender ideology and the breakdown of the family actually coalesce into a single complex. In 1970, the Marxist feminist Shulamith Firestone wrote this, quote, the end goal of feminist revolution must be not just the elimination of male privilege, but of the sex distinction itself. Then the tyranny of the biological family would be broken. Unobstructed pansexuality would replace heterosexuality and all forms of sexuality would be allowed and indulged. Firestone argued, quote, unless revolution uproots the basic social organization, the biological family, the tapeworm of exploitation will never be annihilated. As you can see, cultural Marxists from the very beginning have always advocated the annihilation of the nuclear family, precisely because it was the family that trained children to have loyalties and fidelities that superseded modern ideologies like cultural Marxism. The end goal of gender ideology is not equality or equity or civil rights. The end goal of it all is to overturn the very foundations of traditional society, namely the family. Is it any wonder then that the left-wing party that oversees education in our nation is pushing this gender ideology at the same time undermining the family? I think yeah. the Biden administration is all in on that. Biden. Well, they will not say a word against it, even though plenty of other countries in Europe are yes. establishing. Plenty right. of the media in the New, York, the New York Times, even the Washington Post, have begun to consider maybe there are problems with these puberty yes. blockers and these early interventions, and maybe we shouldn't intervene so early. And the Biden administration is no enemies whatsoever to the left ever. Right. We will never say anything, but this is essential, obvious, and we should transfer it as, as, as soon as possible. And it, it's just, I don't even think Biden is that behind this, but I, but he's certainly controlled by people who are. Well, medical schools are behind this, actually. You, yes. You've read stories and that's about, the problem, yeah, is it? They're, right. they're training these medical yes. students to Medi say that uh, puberty, yeah. puberty blockers are reversible. Right. They're not, and this, actually. And this is coming from the, we're the science people. Right. Well, that's science. Thank you very much. You were both great. So as you can see, this is very, very good news. Even many on the left are beginning to recognize that they didn't sign up for this. They didn't sign up. They signed up for science, for reason, for free speech, human rights. They didn't sign up for ideological tyranny, either on the left or the right. This is something that scholars have recognized will have profound political ramifications down the road. 
For example, when you ask Demo Democrats that they support some woke agenda, right? Do you support CRT being taught in our schools or transgender athletes competing in women's sports? Well, the answer is generally split down the middle, as you can guess with our panel here. About 50% say yes, the other 50% say no. For example, you could see this precisely where Mar would be. Mar would say no, absolutely not. While uh, maybe another panelist he has would say yes. But when you ask Republicans the exact same questions, do you support such and such woke issue or agenda? What's their answer? <laughs> well, of course, it is not just simply a no. It is a resounding hell no. So what wokeness is doing, however, inadvertently, is it's splitting the left and uniting the right. In other words, the right is far more likely to vote against wokeness than the left is to vote for it. What that means is that there's very little chance that wokeness will be able to sustain itself over the long haul. With both the right and the left united to destroy it, the prospects for wokeness long term appear to be very dismal indeed. As always, make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. You'll definitely want to check out my latest video on Bill Maher leaving Neil deGrasse Tyson absolutely speechless on woke COVID hysteria. It's going to make your day. So make sure to click on that link and I'll see you over there. God bless.